Hello boys and girls, thank you for joining us in today's lesson. We are going to learn about cargo and how to manage your REST projects. Today's objectives are, I'll explain what cargo is and why you should be using it, how to build a project using cargo build, how to run a project in one step using cargo run, how to quickly check for errors without producing a binary using cargo check. And finally, how to release your code into production. Before we start, let's revisit what we've done in the previous lesson and where Cargo fits in all this. Just compiling using the rusc command is not enough. While you can create simple binaries using this command, it quickly becomes impossible to scale when you have multiple dependencies to manage. This is where Cargo utility comes in. Cargo is Rust build system and package manager. There are a lot of options available in Cargo that makes your life extremely easy to manage, especially when you're dealing with big projects. The biggest thing you'll be using Cargo for is downloading the dependencies that your program requires, but also simple tasks like creating projects directories, building and releasing binaries, checking your code, and all those cumbersome activities that you tend to do manually. Essentially, if you're coming from Node.js, think as Cargo as your NPM package manager. Or if you're coming from Java, think of this as your Maven uh, package uh, manager and dependency downloader. Without further ado, let's type some code. As you can see here, I've got my Visual Studio Code application open. On the left hand side is the project tree. On the bottom right hand side, you will see that I've got terminal open. All right, let's issue the command. Cargo new, hello world. As soon as I type this in and press enter, you'll notice a few things have happened. It first created a directory tree. Let's open this directory tree here and expand it a little bit and see what's in it. The first file that we have here is a .git ignore, which is part of the Git ecosystem. If you're not familiar with Git, I highly recommend taking a look at the docs or some video tutorials. It is one of the most popular source control and version management systems out there. It also created a cargo.toml file, which we'll delve into in a minute, and a directory called src, short for source. This directory, if we expand it here, it usually contains a main.rs file. Cargo expects to have all the source code for your project in this directory. The parent directory should only contain non-source code files, such as licenses, configurations, and other text and resource files, such as readmes and such. Okay, now let's open main.rs and explore the content. As you can see here, there is nothing that should be alien to you. This is a simple Hello World program that is a very similar to what you've typed earlier. The only difference here is that Cargo has created this file for you automatically. Perfect. Let's close this file. And now let's move on to Cargo.toml. First of all, let's define what Toml is. It stands for Tom's Obvious Minimal Language. It was created with the primary objective of having a minimal configuration file format that's easy to read and pass. The syntax is very intuitive, consisting of key value pairs, arrays, and other data structure-like entities. This also means that Toml can easily be passed by different programming languages. It's not just for Rust. Okay, now let's dive a bit deeper into the cargo.toml file. The first section that you see here is named package and contains key value pairs of configuration items such as the version, the author's name, the email address, and the name of your project. The more interesting section, at least for the purpose of this lesson, is the dependencies section. This is where we will be defining all the libraries that our project requires. Rust calls these dependencies crates. And you will hear this term quite a lot in the Rust community. So if you're hearing 
library or dependency always think crates okay let's leave this one empty for now since we're not using any dependencies uh, in this lesson and we'll go from there the great advantage of using cargo is that the commands that you will be learning today apply to all the operating systems that are popular from Microsoft Windows to Linux to Mac let's talk about cargo build first it is a command that builds and create binaries for us by default it stores the final executable in a directory called target slash debug of course providing that the build phase is successful and there were no errors with your code now to run that binary that was created using cargo build you'd have to issue the full path of the executable manually okay now before we execute the command, let's make sure that we browse to the correct directory. So in our case, it's hello world. And now we'll type cargo build. Let's explore what cargo build has created for us. So on the left hand side here, you will see that I created the directory called target and the debug directory, just as I mentioned earlier. Now inside this debug directory, you will find few files. So you can ignore all of this for now. The only one that we're interested in is hello world.exe. As mentioned earlier, we need to uh, type the full path for this file to execute it correctly. So let's do that. There you go. Now it has executed. Okay, now let's do something different. We want to do these two steps, the build phase and the running phase, all in one go. Well, we do have a convenient command, which is cargo run. Let's try that. Now, as you can see, cargo run is extremely convenient. It has built the actual binary for us and run it at the same time. The last command that I really want to talk about is cargo check, which basically checks that everything is set with your code and there are no errors. Let's go ahead and issue this command. As you can see, cargo check checked our code and, and it just completed straight away. But now we said earlier that check does not actually create a binary. But as you can see here, there is the target directory and it might seem confusing. So I'll tell you what, let's delete this directory and issue the command again and let's verify whether the binary was created or not cargo check we have a target directory here let's have a look at debug so if you issue the cargo build you would expect the binary to be here however when you expand the debug as you can see there is no binary in this directory tree there is a lot of different folders and files but like i said ignore these for now so let's summarize here what we've created so far we've run cargo build cargo run and we've finished with cargo check now let's say you've been iterating through your code and you're happy with it and your project as a whole is ready for showtime i.e production release it is imperative that you issue the release command for cargo with cargo build dash dash release. This will ensure that the final build and binary is optimized for performance. But you might say, why do we need to do that since cargo run runs it for me? Why can't I just use that? Well, as I mentioned earlier, cargo run produces a binary in the debug with debug information in it, right? It's not optimized for production. But if we issue this command here, cargo build dash dash release, it will create a brand new binary in a directory called release. And in here, you will have super optimized executable. In fact, if you were to compare the sizes, there will be different sizes between the release executable and the debug executable. So before we end the lesson, I do want to touch upon uh, another file here that is lurking in this project directory, and you probably have noticed. It's called cargo.lock. Essentially, this is a snapshot of your 
dependencies at the moment of a successful build. This is extremely important if you're producing binaries for end system and production system, production releases. Not so much important if you're building libraries that other people will use, essentially building crates that will be uh, used by uh, different uh, developers. Okay, thank you so much and we'll see you on the next lesson.